expecting to be a pretty solid 2-0 in favor of SKT, but we'll see if IM has anything kind of special in mind. Interesting. Blue side, rec side ban from SK Telecom. Lulu, a commonly banned champion against Frozen. He's known mostly for his Zareth and Lulu play. Rumble will not be given to Marin. No surprise there. I think SKT wants the first pick, Maokai. Probably. Yeah. Marin's been really good on that champion recently. Oh, yeah. He's been pretty amazing. Marin actually fourth in solo queue at the moment, so really high up there at the top of the ladder. Faker actually surprisingly only 14th. Very unusual for Faker to be oh. outside of the top 10 and deft right now from EDG. Number one. Yeah. Thresh ban against Tucson, a very good ban. Thresh is certainly his best champion. And there's the Janna ban. Okay, against Wolf. Wolf, a very good Janna player. So will we see that first pick, Maokai? No. Kalista gets through it. They're wow. going to first pick Kalista for Bang. That just happened. Really? I, have, I haven't been that impressed with Bang's Kalista overall, but it's the first time actually since we got back from the IEM break that Kalista has been available. It's been banned in all the other games in spite of those wind-up nerfs I coming mean, in. Clearly, the Korean scene is not phased by that at all because it doesn't seem like they've missed a beat in terms of playing Kalista when they can. It's just been banned. It's just weird we didn't see it at IEM. That's the thing. Yeah, I guess so. Even with a team like CJ, where we see all the bans flying in on Kalista, that they wouldn't have that as a priority. It's like they came back and a day later decided that Kalista was ban-worthy. Yeah. There he's maybe getting the Jarvan right here. The Maokai, an easy choice too. Yep. SKT had to know this was going to happen. They had to know if they first picked Kalista, they'd be giving over the Maokai Jarvan. Yep. And so what's the plan? Lilac has been way better on Maokai than he has on any of his other champions this season. Yeah. So I think that may be a little bit of a misplay. Marin may oh. be taking a Hecarim. They're going for Team Ghost. It's Udyr. Well, not not, Hec not Udyr. He's not a ghost. He's not like, yet. Koma's like, nope, not in the professional game, son. Oh, come on. Has his, has his hand on Tom's shoulder. He's like, not to. Oh, oh he, he locks it in. in. <laughs> and Tom bringing that solo cute Udyr to his first professional game. Koma's oh, like. Hype. He's like, you're fired if you don't perform well on him. You know that, right? He's like, Tom's like, yeah, I, I get it. This is your one game on Udyr. Make it count. <laughs> That's right. We'll give you this one. All Frozen's right. like, I well, can't believe they did it. Let's talk about Udyr real quick. Sure. So, Udyr, what Tom typically does, uh, of course, we still are on 5.4, <laughs> is he builds uh, the Stalker's Blade so he has a little bit more CC and yep. engage in terms of ganking. Then he'll build Juggernaut Enchantment, and then he just goes straight tank. Ninja Tabby and Frozen Heart and Spirit Visage. That's his most common solo queue build and gets that Phoenix stance. And you know, what's what's interesting about watching Tom play Udyr is how well he selects his targets. He is able just to bounce around between people incredibly well with bear stance while toggling AOE with Phoenix. Yeah. And so he can peel really nicely for his teammates and he'll have to do that very well to deal with Kalista. It's, it's an, even more important now because Kalista is less mobile if you want to maximize her damage because if you build that attack speed, then you just can't hop around as much if right. you want to really get all of your autos off. So that means that it's even more important than it ever has been to peel properly for Kalista. Well, this is really turning into Team Save Kalista. And we see I am taking the Ezreal pick away from Faker, of course, one of his most dominating picks this season. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, Zareth still available. I don't know if Zareth quite fits into this composition as well, but yeah, it's possible. I would be worried about playing Zareth. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna see it. I actually don't mind that so much because it will also relieve pressure from Bang on Kalista to have him going in on that Diana. Udyr really All disrupts right. what Maokai is meant to do in the back lines as well, too. A lot of uh, zoning and CC from that. All right, this is going to be entertaining from SKT yeah, because Hecarim and Diana are super all in. Man, Hecarim, Diana, Udyr are just going to get in and wreck your back line. And Udyr, then he's going to turn around and wreck whoever tries to get into your back line, <laughs> in theory. And well, yeah, and they've got double AD, a lot of escapes, and that. Oh, this is actually pretty smart against the Udyr. I mean, you can take a lot of that tankiness away. But I think Tarek is a much better choice, obviously. <laughs> no, no, it's not 5.5 yet. 
We know you've been practicing it. So is Tom on solo queue quite a bit. Don't want to take that Nautilus. I'm actually really excited to see if Nautilus gets back into the pro scene. He's one of my favorite champions to watch. It certainly is starting to look like he might. I think he might. And it certainly seems like he might be replaced by Vladimir in this game. That's going to be a mid Vlad from Frozen, what? I would imagine. No, wait. It's a support that's a Maokai. support Maokai. All right, well. What? Wow. All right. It has been run in China. Uh, OK. Also, it's worth noticing, noting that what is this game? That uh, Faker has been playing a lot of mid Vlad in solo queue. With That's true. Ghost and Flash. What is this game, Monty? So yeah, support Maokai. Now, typically OMG likes to run this into Rumble uh, because his ultimate actually helps deal with the Equalizer. Reasonable. I don't really know why you would pick it into Morgana. That seems like a really risky laning phase. Yeah. Uh, but it is good always to lock down Callista. So I'm not really feeling the Vlad here, though. That's the weird thing, because the Vlad, I mean, the Vlad I, I mean, you could pop his ult and get a lot of damage in with 280 carries while the Hemoplague is going. But. Definitely a bit of an oddball composition from Incredible Miracle. Well, maybe saying, hey, if you want to come in on our team, you're going to have to have everybody get Hemo Plague. Yeah. Except for Callista. But yeah, I think her, I thought he might play Vlad tonight, but I was not expecting it in top lane out of Lilac. Well, this is already very different from uh, really any of the other games we've seen this season or <laughs> in don't... season five. Well, in Korea. In yes. Korea. Well, of course, I'm only talking about I'm a, I'm a Korean League of Legends caster, man. That's what I do. All right, time to get in the game. See, now if uh, SKT wins Worlds with Tom's Udyr, the skin is going to have to have like the OGN hawk as his phoenix stance. <laughs> yeah. And here we go, SKT versus IM. SKT uh, going going a bit ham, I think you could say in uh, pick pan. <laughs> well, this is Let's about. See how it goes. This is pretty. This is pretty ham. The ham level is is high for it's SKT true. right now. It's true. I'm very interested in the Lilacs Vladimir because I think this is actually a pretty big risk, especially against Hecarim Udir, because if he pushes forward. Hecarim can just, I mean, sure you have pool, but Udir is just going to bear stance alongside of the pool yeah. and run just as fast as you and then wait till you pop up and then punch you in the face and stun you. So <laughs> He's not going to take damage. Yeah, he's not going to take damage. So I don't really know. I think this actually makes it quite easy for Tom to gank the Vlad lane. Vlad really weak early in this game and very vulnerable if he pushes up as well. And Marin can also get right on top of him. He can run after and then pop his Q. Kind of funny how Udyr's arm kind of swings back and forth behind him. That's a bit odd. Nobody runs like that. He's really fighting Shen for the weirdest looking uh, walking animation right now. Well, he doesn't have a tail, so he has to wag his arm behind him instead. It's helping. It's stability, right? It's helping him go in a straight line. It's like a rudder, sort of. <laughs> All right, well, we are going to see the two sapling start. No disruption yet from SK Telecom. So Faker will start behind in terms of X XP. Bang and Wolf going to take the small Krug and head in. Tucson and Sonstar grabbing that Grom for themselves. So yep. a lot of early jungling in this one. Makes sense. And so we will see that 2v2. Down in bot lane of Bang and Wolf versus Sonstar and Tucson. Yeah, I think. Uh, you know, the thing is that Korea may not have been as scared off of oh these boy. Calista changes because the Koreans were less likely to build that Rune and Hurricane build than other regions. Oh, that's a good point, yeah. So that attack speed, the attack windup animation, that mostly just hurts attack speed builds. It hurts all builds, but it, it hurts them, the attack speed builds a lot more. So if you're going to build Infinity Edge or something like that, maybe you you change your mind. And just the, the objective control you get with Ren stacks is ridiculous. So it, does, it still has a high upside if you're able to position with her properly. Well, Faker has a 100% win rate on that Diana, but I'm not sure how many games I, we've seen him play on that before. Well, let me Monty's tell you, Monty's looking it up, guys. I will look up the stat right now. He's going to let us know. Meanwhile, we'll check out the action in bot lane while wow, Sansa just getting poked so hard. Yeah, this is going to be a tough lane for Sansa and Tucson, I think. 
that's why we've yeah. seen that a lot of those bands is just such a powerful such powerful pickup in terms of the laning phase and then the how you can control Baron and Dragon and how you can control the map with those Sentinels. Well, with nice. uh, Sivir, though, they got the quicker level three. You do get a little bit more wave clear early on, of course. Yeah, they also got the Grom, so that, that will too. be very helpful for them. Lilac yep. doing a good job of harassing early on. Marin having a tough time because he has to walk up to that wave and just take a transfusion for free like that every yeah. time. So really annoying to deal with. They don't even give him, like, cookies and orange juice after it. <laughs> Really mean. Well, that's that's what happens when Vladimir just keeps all the blood for himself. He's not he's not a generous that's blood true. mage. It doesn't go to people who need it. So I don't Hemo. think he cares how you feel after. Hemo mage. What's actually the correct term for that? Uh, he hemomancer. I hemomancer. I think so. Oh, the hemomancer may be in a heap of trouble. No, nope, turning it around. Actually, Marin. There's the exhaust, and he is really there's well the ignite. I'm gonna be able to. Oh, is he? No, he didn't use the ignite. He did use the ignite. On to two seconds. Oh, I think that was a misclick. Yeah. All right, SKT will just respond with the dragon, though. Natural. Right. He really did not expect support Baokai to be there. But you know what? Yeah, I, I love either. that two cents playing this. He's like, okay, you took my Thresh. I will find a different champion to roam all over the map with and make these heavy engages. Two cents has uh, cool always, always been a very good roaming support. Certainly helps out, but look at the CS lead that Bang is getting in the bot lane against Sonstar. You know, I mean, yeah, they got the first blood, but if this continues, you know, Dragon going to SKT, is it worth it to get Sonstar so behind? That's that's going to be the question. Yeah. Of course, Udi are so good at controlling these early, early dragons and early objectives in general, so he should be hard farming from this point forward. This is only Faker's second professional game on Diana. He's one, oh, okay. and one and zero so far. That's what I was thinking. I just really could not remember the last time I saw it. Yeah, I never really known as a Diana player, obviously. No. Um, he kind of, he wasn't playing in season two when it was a really popular pick. So that's yeah. really the last time we saw a lot of Diana, at least in Korea, was before he started playing, kind of um, late season two, early season three. And so, in Blaze's run, we saw a lot of Blaze's run to the Champions Spring Final in 2013. We saw a lot of top lane Diana used, especially right. by Flame. Well, Lilac getting jumped on yet again. Marin just trying to push up that top lane a little bit. And even though he has died, he is a little bit up on CS, of course. Down in overall goal due to that first blood going to Lilac. Who has picked up a Hextech revolver, it looks like. Yeah, it's really annoying, and Vladimir really starts getting scary when he's level 8, level 9, when he starts to max out his Q, and it's very difficult to trade with him, and especially with that first Blood Gold and the early Hextech Revolver. Marin's going to be having some issues up in that top side. Yep. And meanwhile, Sunstar doing quite a good job of farming down here in spite of Tucson's early roam. Yeah, it's catching up quite a bit. Oh, nice Oh, find. stopping the recalls, oh. and uh, Tucson may be in a little bit of trouble here. Sunstar got out. There's the Ren, sling him down. Is it enough? It is, and Bang picks up a kill for SKT. Wow, Sonstar should not have completed that recall right there. I, was I know he wasn't looking at the screen 100% because after that bind landed, he had time to cancel, Yeah. and instead Tucson got hung out to dry. Wow, that was just a really dangerous spot to recall as well, too. And that is a problem with this scene, but you don't often see it be that bad. That was bad. Was bad. Faker also taking a lot of harass early. Wolf oh. finds Ares in the jungle. Sonstar there. Wolf off warding by himself. Oh, and he's yeah. Gonna die. He will indeed. A kill for Ares. Getting those deep wards in. Thought I'd be a little bit safer, but Wolf punished pretty hard for I. He also stuck around to try and auto a pink ward, which oh, was yeah. not the best idea. Well, that pink ward is, is almost there just as bait for uh, supports to stick around and try to kill too sometimes. It works pretty well. Faker catching up a little bit in terms of CS. Yeah, more or less. Frozen not getting an assist off of that kill. So, it's like he's going Morello and Omicon first. That's really interesting. Typically, you want those bruiser items on Diana. But well, he, he doesn't want to go for an arm guard. Faker's all about the damage. No arm guard for Faker. Faker has to go walk around the other side, take it with a crescent blade. Yep. There we go. You know, the other thing, too, is by getting this quicker Athenes, do you think this puts them in a better position for that second dragon? That they're just kind of really banking on controlling that objective? I mean, if you're really confident you're not going to get poked out of lane by this Ezreal, and 
Oh, Faker doing a lot of damage to Frozen here. Frozen still has that summoner heal, still has a flash. Faker has not used Ignite yet. Wow, yeah, that was a little bit dangerous, especially with that heal still up. Well, Ignite is better than heal, obviously, uh, sure. because you can cut down the amount of damage that is healed in the end. So I'm a bit surprised that Frozen didn't take something like Barrier this game instead. Uh, maybe he wasn't expecting the Ignite. Maybe he was expecting the Teleport. That is yeah. True. That is true. yeah, Teleport Diana has been what we've seen a lot of in, uh, in China and just in general. Exhaust, Ghost perhaps. Yeah, he could have taken Exhaust too, that's a good point. Yeah. I think the Ignite was a bit of a surprise for uh, Frozen. Yeah, he, the, th the difference is, is that Faker has that Flask, so he'll be able to heal up off of that one. Ooh, Whoa. tries to yeah, geez. tag Frozen with the second R right there and nail him. A two shot barrage, a little bit of damage onto Faker as Ares was close by. What's Baron doing? Yeah, well, Baron is uh, in the enemy jungle, I guess, waiting for Faker and Tom to come up. Go ahead and drop a pink ward right there, clear Baron's, one out in the river. Baron's pretty far down in CS right now, too. Well, Wild yeah, Wild. this is a problem with Vlad. If you yeah. don't get him early. Whoa, they threw Tucson in just now. Oh, no, he didn't. That was just advanced. Never mind. Oh, Sunstar. Yeah, just blocking that. Six. Yeah, Sunstar also blocking that. Rend with his spell shield faker. Going to find another pink ward. Oh, here we go. Fear onto Lilac. Gets pushed back into the turret. There's Tom as well. And again, just waiting for that pool. There's a flash. Where's the other stun? There it is. And Lilac goes down. A kill for Marin. Tom already doing work on that Udyr. Just following right along with that pool. Yeah, and that sets him up for the next gank as well. If yeah. Lilac pushes forward, Tom has to be there in order to get those kills. Uh, because using that flash on Udyr, as soon as you use it, you have to make that gank work if you play Udyr. And all you Udyr players know this. Mm. If you blow your flash and don't get a kill, you're not ganking anything for a long time after that. That's really detrimental. He is a very volatile jungler in that sense that he requires his flash more or less to be available or else he's going to get kited out. And that's the reason we don't often see him in the professional scene is while he has strong wave clear, strong objective control and gets really tanky and can split push well as well. He just is so easy to deal with in team fights if he's trying to initiate, which is why I'm not exactly sold on this particular composition for Udyr. I'd rather see him in a kiting composition or a double AD run by SKT, but I think SKT may assume that they have so much engage with Hecarim and Diana that Udyr will be able to just walk up into the enemy team. Or at way. the very least, they've got the other engage so that he can just play Peelbot for Bang. This is a really dangerous dragon, yeah, and SKT might as well, away from it. Might as well try and go for it, though, just because Udyr can chew through the dragon really fast. And they're going to go ahead and clear out both those wards with lenses. And Udyr puts pretty crazy pretty crazy pressure on these Whoa, objectives. Whoa, aren't a little bit low. Has to be kind of careful here. And we see that Juggernaut of Chapman coming in yep. for Tom as well. Well, it's interesting to think of, about what you're going to be able to do with these uh, type of junglers too, once Cinder Hulk comes in for Korea in 5.5. Of course, we're still in 5.4 at the moment, but you know we've seen rumors of the Nautilus. I think Udyr is going to certainly benefit from it. Udyr, Phoenix Udyr's clear is going to be insanely fast with yeah. that item. Sonstar has to pop Flash and his ultimate. Uh-oh, could be a bit of trouble. Teleport coming in as well. There's Exhaust on to Wolf. Tom trying to get away right now, and I am all over SKT. Tom's still running and he actually makes it out. Udyr says, see ya. Dragon's still up, though, and I think I am going to get this one. Yeah, Marin deciding not to teleport right there. They'll just trade yeah. the turret board instead. They already have a lead and a dragon of their own, so they can equalize one-to-one, -one, push the lanes, and use that TP for something else a little bit later on. Faker just oh, going to go okay. ahead and invade the red buff. Nice cross-map play from SKT right here. Yeah. Taking everything on the top I side. I think Bang's about to get dove. Down in bot lane. Well, there's TP oh, up. Maybe though. No. There's You're TP right. up. So there's recalls, though. Yeah, there's TP up. It would be really hard yeah. to, to dive Bang safely at the moment. Also, there's the danger that Udyr can just show up. Oh, Sunstar could be a little oh, bit trouble. Again. Oh, man. And Bang with an easy kill here. Oh. Wow, these recalls have not been smart for IM. Again, that slight staggering of the recall gets Bang another kill in this laning phase. It's insane. First it was Sonstar leaving Tus, and then it's everybody else leaving Sonstar. IM needs to be a little bit more careful about where they recall. Yeah, 
They, they certainly do. Faker going for his blue buff right now. Yeah, if he had just recalled in the brush right next to him, he would have been fine. Yeah, didn't have any vision there, but it was a good call, actually, from Bang. Look at the wards yeah. he had on that top side. He knew that he it was a safe play to make. Looks like he's going for that Bloodthirster first build, so just a very safe Callista build. We see it yeah, pretty much exclusively in free here. Very lane dominance as well. Oh, now they get the blue buff too. Wow. Yeah, uh, SKT just taking all of the objectives for yeah. just that one kill. Yeah, one kill on the bottom side got the dragon, but SKT got a whole lot in return, including that top wave. So Marin able to bounce the wave, get it right back onto his tier one, and start trying to recover some of that lost farm that he had early. Vladimir, another champion that is difficult to actually engage with right here. Hopefully with Jarvan and with Maokai, they have enough other engage to make this work. Well, that's the plan, isn't it? SKT waiting in River right now. Looks like they'll just go ahead and wow. recall. Sansar going Brutalizer as well. He's really intimidated by this Callista pick. Yeah, he so. went for some early game power to try and match Callista, but that's gonna, that's gonna mean he's not really going to be that effective in terms of auto attacking here in these mid-game team fights should they erupt. Well, it's going to be a very late Trinity Force for uh, or Infinity Edge, rather, yep. for uh, Sunstar right now. Really late. Yeah, this Brutalizer. But he's had, to help him long -term. he's had to deal with a lot of pressure in that lane, so he will pay for it, though, in terms of these team fights that will be coming up. Marin now tanky enough, has the Merc Treads, has a Cowl as well, yeah. so he's not going to be as intimidated split pushing against Lilac. I suppose a little bit of extra armor penetration early on doesn't really hurt against Nudir. I mean, you can kind of see it that way too, but it just slows down the, the ultimate goal, you know? Yeah, and also, the scary thing about the Zudir pick, Doa, is how efficient Frozen Heart is going to be in this game. Oh, yeah. Against the double AD, such a great item to pick up. He's already well on his way to that item. Oh, Marin able to catch up more or less in farm as well. Chasing Lilac away from those minions. Yeah, he now he has the Sheen. He's got the right items to trade at this point in time because he can go ahead and tank a couple of those Qs to his face yep. as well as he can get some Sheen procs down. And Lilac doesn't have any tankiness yet. He's really far away from getting a Zonia's Hourglass, which is what he needs to deal with the split pushing of this Hecarim right now. He can basically just wave clear. Pretty much. At least he's got a little bit safer place to do it since turret is done, so. Ooh, couldn't so, even sometime. finish arm guard. That actually oh, wow. really hurts. Because he can't start stacking that armor in AP right away. Yeah. That's really not a good back for him. But that's part of that's part of the problem with arm guard in general is that it's twelve hundred gold, so it's pretty expensive item to buy in one back alone. Yeah. I mean, he's got his will of the ancients ready, so he's not too terribly far down in items themselves. But having that arm guard stacking early on would have been pretty nice. SKT with a lot of pressure here in the mid lane now. Yeah, they have, They've got half damage done to that turret already. They have a lot of melee champions here. Yeah, they do. Man, but look at that. Bang just walks up, takes another quarter of the turret's health off. All right, also, as they walk forward, you'll notice he went and postured a little bit more aggressively aggressively in the jungle, made sure that he was off the map. No wards for IM topside either, so they couldn't really risk and engage. Yeah. And now Faker is moving into split push mode. So SK Telecom, one thing that, that uh, we haven't really mentioned right now is that they have a lot of ways to split push, a lot. Uh, they can split push with Udyr, they can split push with Diana and Hecarim. So they, they're gonna be trying to run a 1-3-1 right here because they don't have the best wave clear in this situation in order to deal with kind of putting on sieges or dealing with pressure from IM, especially since we have a Bloodthirster first Callista. So in this particular game, they just want to Start rolling with this split push early. Try and get Ooh. an advantage that way. Martin's got to be careful he doesn't take too much damage here. Dragon is up in 30 seconds. Smart to back away now. He's got his teleport. So does Lilac. Just needs to make sure he's not chunked out. He'll just recall and Yeah, he needs we'll to push the happens. wave up so that they weren't threatening the tower during the dragon engagement. That's going to be incoming. The Shroud finished onto Udyr right now. And surprised, uh, actually surprised. Marin actually completed the Spear Visage. Thought he would get home guards and then sit there. Oh. 
And that's a lot of damage on to Tucson. Tucson pops the ultimate. The turret very, very low as well. Sotstar trying to zone. It's some really valuable poke yeah. right before this dragon went live, though. Now Tom coming in with a raptor buff to find some of these wards in the brushes. He is going to see that one on the side and grab it as well. Vladimir already there, though, so they have to make the most out of this engagement. Yeah, I think Ekrim's going to need to come down very, very soon. Dragon activated by SK Telecom. Yeah, look at Udyr, just takes no damage from the dragon. Yep. Oh, Bang is playing so far forward. Tom still tanking it. Lilac hit with the Dark Binding, chunked down fairly safely. There is the ult coming in for Sivir. Tom runs in with Turtle Sands. He gets it, he spites it away. Two kills, Faker picks it up as well. And here comes Ekrim over the top. Marin getting deep into the back lines. There's another kill for Tom on Udyr. And Tucson just getting run over a double kill for Faker and SKT. Could not have asked for any more out of that oh, team fight. Oh, not going to kill anybody, Tom. Nah, not, not yet. They actually had vision on Tom, Yeah, I believe. I'm surprised he didn't shoot the True Shot Barrage over there, but I suppose he's just trying to preserve his turret right now. And Wow, Tom doing work, smiting that dragon away. It was a bit close, getting a kill. And again, we're seeing the strength of that zoning that Udyr creates. I can't believe I'm saying that in a match <laughs> I'm actually casting on champions. Well, I think the, the key is, is that they have enough other engage that Udyr has time just to run in because yeah. if they didn't have an other threats this would be an issue so they start off this dragon right here Tom they're trying to secure it but Lilac actually gets bound that was really a nice setup from Wolf right there because they were able to chunk Lilac out Tom takes it gets the immediate stun onto Ares as wow. well blows him up and Tom just playing the periphery on this Udyr pickup Kimo Blake nearly kills him Turtle stands back in and survives that Boomerang Blade as well, and Bang just hopping forward that entire time. When you watch ben, uh, Tom play Udyr, by the way, not only pay attention to his target selection, but watch the way he plays the periphery on Udyr as well. He doesn't just run in there, he kind of dances around the side the entire time trying to stun you or making you use ineffective skill shots that aren't going to hit multiple people on his team. And he knows he can't engage on Udyr. He knows he's just going to get kited that way. So he's more of a, he's a secondary engage. He's following up on what the rest of the team is doing and then chaining the earlier CCs into his later ones. But that was a great setup for that fight. It was mostly Wolf landing that binding and Lilac being too far forward. Yeah, now in the middle of all this, Bank continuing with the safest build ever, going with the QSS for his second item. He knows that like Faker's doing the burst, Marn is doing a lot of damage as well. Bang just needs to stay alive and keep poking with yeah, those autos. I think that's a that's an interesting pickup. It's all for the Maokai. Yeah. Yeah, you don't I don't know if I agree with that. Mod. I don't know if I agree with that, Doha. There's not mm. suppose you can clear off the Hemo Plague too, that's kind of useful. Yeah, probably. I mean they've got a lead. He's got sort of this moment where it's you know, okay, but this is the type of thing too that you see it kind of giving the other team a bit of a chance too. Yeah, and also I just don't think it's that justified. Okay, Tom's gonna solo the Baron right now. This is it's 21 minutes in, guys. This is happening. Okay, Bang is right there. No vision for I am. Udyr they don't know this is happening. Udyr does weird things in games. This is just one of those things that he can do, having that insane control. Yeah, and turtle power. <laughs> Indeed, he turtle is a power. hero and a half though. Yeah, Baron getting lower. I am has got to be wondering where a lot of SKT is right now. Now they know True Shot Barrage. Too late, they check it Too with Frozen. Ren stacks. It is. Rend plus a smite plus an unkillable Udyr means a 22 minute Baron for SK Telecom. That's such a great idea. The Udyr yeah. Callista combination really does give you insane early control over Dragon and Baron. And when you have Udyr too, there's virtually no risk. He can get out of the pit relatively easily. And because of Turtle Stance, he's not going to be that chunked out. Yeah. So you can disengage at will if somebody comes. And if they don't, you just have Bang stacking one billion Ren stacks on it. And then that's it. You get a multi-thousand damage execute yep. combined with Smite. It's a good call, very good call. Yeah. Frozen with the Iceborne this game, just trying to deal. It's the perfect item to get. This is how you want to deal with Hecarim and Diana and Udyr. So. Yep, everybody's running at you. Anything you can do to slow them down and kite it out is beneficial. Yeah, I really, you know, Doha, I, the more I think about this QSS, the more I just don't get it. Because you have Black Shield, too, so why? You don't trust your support? 
<laughs> Bang know. making a commentary on Wolf's black shielding skills right now. I guess right so, now. yeah. Good question. Late game, it's fine. I just think he'd be better off with a faster Phantom Dancer. Baker also decided to go Death Cap after Zonia's. No Abyssal with this game, but Vladimir is the only magic damage threat. He's probably not going to be attacking Faker or using abilities on Faker. Well, as is, too. Look at this. 23 minutes in and already a 6,000 gold lead for SK Telecom. Three turrets to one. Really just kind of controlling this game from minute one. Yeah, and this is SK Telecom. They, yep. Ever since we saw, they were a little shaky earlier in the season. SKT maybe having some issues, like discovering their identity. Sometimes, uh, uh, what? It was the style Zonias. I guess so. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, starting out this season, SK Telecom, they they had some issues. We saw a lot of swapping around between Easy Hoon and Faker. Bengi was really off his game in the earlier matches. But ever since a few weeks ago, they played. Uh, oh, all use are going to go in on to Tom. Locking him up is Tucson. Tom's Tom's going to turn around. Bear stance immediately. Sansar looking to do some damage. They get the knock up onto Wolf, but bang on the outside of this fight. Saves nice his support. And now Udyr can just walk uh, away. Marin. Marin as well. Running out. And looks like they may be considering coming back in. They still got that Baron buff. Really clean disengage from SKT, though. Meanwhile, Meanwhile Faker just taking this inhibitor turret. Taking a bit of damage from the turret as well after the True Shot Barrage clears out the minion wave, but overall SKT is still looking in control here. All right, that's about all IM could ask for right there. I think so. And uh, see the black shield. It stopped the it stopped the twisted advance. You hey. didn't even need to use QSS right there. What do there. you know? It's almost like you didn't have to buy that item. Hey, we've well, got it just in case. <laughs> There's a dragon. It's going to be the third dragon now for SK Telecom if they decide to finish, which they will. I think Bang is taking his parents' advice a little too seriously, always wearing his safety belt. I guess so. <laughs> it's sad. It kind of looks like a headband, though, with the angle that they have it in the graphic. It doesn't look like a belt. It looks like a Quicksilver headband. I agree with you. Yeah. So, yeah, SK, SK, Tel SK Telecom, though, a little shaky as we started things off this season, but they had a really good series against GE Tigers. Probably one of the, if not the best match we've seen so far in Korea this year. Yeah, it was a 2-1. Yeah. Only the G's Tiger's second loss before I am. Uh, he has to taunt while he waits for Manny. He's like, yes, it's my time to shine on Udyr. But ever since that G Tigers match, they've been on this big win streak, three wins in a row so far in terms of match score. And they really have found a nice balance between Faker and Easy Hoon. Easy Hoon has had some very impressive performances. Easy Hoon near the top of the rankings in terms of KDA at 8.6, and Faker up near the top of the rankings in terms of GPM. So they've, they've had a little bit different threats. Faker number two at GPM right now behind Prey. So SKT, they've got their groove now. Bengi's figured out a great way to play around this team. They're starting to add some depth to their roster with Tom, who's been playing really well for his first professional game ever. Yeah, very, very calculated, very smart, not really taking any risks he's, uh, he doesn't need to. He's had a little bit of help because Bang and Wolf were able to get a couple of kills in lane this game, and, oh, yeah. and Faker is Faker. But he did he did help turn around Marin's lane with a pretty good gank, and it's just his objective control has also been spot on. Mm -hmm. So, oh, spots a pink ward there. Lilac coming up though. In a weird way too, Doa. Oh, another turret. Yeah, Udir actually does prepare you to kind of play at the professional level because he is he gives you so many choices in a game. Well, Faker coming in, uh, making the choice to take a big chunk of Aries health off. Meanwhile, Tucson on his own in the back lines. Whoa. Faker decides he wants that kill, comes back and gets it. Marin getting kited a bit by Frozen. I was wondering how Faker, like, managed to Lunar Rush that far. Yeah. He actually flashed right there, but it was so incredibly smooth that it just looked like a single movement. Uh, we've seen him do that on champions like LeBlanc before, but his right. mechanics are pretty impressive. What do you know? It is Faker, and there's a black shield on the top as he comes in. They take out Sonstar. Faker with another kill. Bang, more damage to turrets. Bang is just like the designated turret killer this game. He stays alive and he kills turrets. Meanwhile, the rest of SKT just makes life miserable for IM. Yeah. Oh. Right here. Playing his guitar right in front of a minion wave, so he will have to go rock out somewhere else.
Bang 204. Good. Faker's Diana. I mean, the mechanics are there, but it's Faker. No big shock. And yeah. Tucson, I, he just looks a bit, aside from that early gank up in top lane, he looks pretty uncomfortable, honestly, on this support Maokai. Yeah, I like the theory behind it, though. If you're IM, I think this is a good way to use your strengths. I'm not saying it was a bad pick compositionally, but it just looks like he personally is having a, a bit of a struggle finding chances to get. But they're, they're coming from so far down. What does Maokai do at that point, I guess? It's also they picked it into Morgana. Yeah, that is true. Of course, they had that opportunity to play at top lane, but they last picked the Vladimir instead. Mm -hmm. So there's, they definitely had the, the choice in this game after seeing the full composition from SKT. And I'm not, not certain that's the best choice. Also, credit to SKT. If we talk about how they won this game, they're 1-3-1 split pushing the entire game. They've done a great job of making sure all the minion waves are pushed up. They have total control over this map. It really has been like a lights out dominating performance from us. Oh, here we go. They're going to catch Aries as he tries to come in. Tucson following. Sunstar popping the L, backing off already. Faker about half health. Got to be careful though. Wolf gets thrown in. There's a flash. Bear stance stun. And Tom picks up another kill on Sunstar. Oh, Frozen. Frozen is in deep trouble in the red buff pit. <laughs> Gets out, nearly Ooh. kills Wolf. Yeah, nice Wolf actually there. missed his bind right there. Yeah. It's pretty easy bind to hit. Nice try. On the collapse, and instead nearly is taken out, but they'll just turn right. Oh right. boy, Marin. Bye, Marin. Look at that horse. That horse is amazing. Yeah, that horse just had to use his ult to escape a 1v3. Ah, it's okay. His team's getting barren. He's pushing up the top lane. He didn't need to stay and inevitably die to that fight. <laughs> Another Baron. All five members taking it. I think it's worth using it all to make sure you can get a Baron buff. How about you? And, and just keeping that pressure on as well. It's impressive yeah. to me that SKT didn't even have to use the Hecarim ult during that team fight. Let's take a look at that one again. And here we go. Ares tries to get the engage. Look at Bang playing the periphery really well right there. Getting as far away from the enemy carries as possible while still putting damage on the front line. Tom with the flash. Stun Faker with the follow up. And frozen. Whoops. How do you miss that? <laughs> I don't know. He's in like literally a place where he can't move right, and you exactly. miss it. Yeah. He's not barred. He's not going to be going through that wall or anything. The only magical journey he's taking is a short trip back to the fountain. A trip to the grave? That's right. Some might say the most magical of all journeys. I suppose, yeah. Wow, Bang has done such a good job of saving Wolf when I'm Wolf is about to die. I'm much more impressed with Bang's Callista this game than in other matches that we've seen him so far. Yeah. He's been on point. Oh. All right, now Bang's like, you know what? I don't need a team. I've got my uh, last whisper. Uh, I love seeing SK Telecom start to initiate this, this split push style. It's fun to watch, and we haven't seen enough split pushing in season five, in my opinion, it just, we've seen so many like death ball compositions and hope compositions. It's good to good to return to the old 1-3-1. One, one. Yeah, there's dragon number four for SK Telecom after Baron number two, turret number six, kill number 10. So SK Telecom looking to close this one out pretty fast here. Marin doing some damage to Lilac. Sunstar is going to do absolutely no damage to Udyr. Yep. He doesn't even have Last Whisper yet, and Tom is just ridiculously tanky at this stage. And this is very methodical play. Go ahead, keep it up. 1-3-1, one, one. Udyr's there to be a front line and peel in case they engage. I really like I like this composition, and I love the way that SKT is playing it. Yeah. It's a very good use of their of their champions. Oh, and he's in, he's yeah, they have to Two people that can't stop Bang from autoing the turret. Tom there as well. well. There it goes. Yeah, Tom going deep. Spell Shield, I think, blocked that bear stun. It did, yeah. He's going to back off, yeah. And Bang's got the black shield. He can just walk right in. Lilac tries to pop that Hemo Plague. Use the ultimate, gets it on a few people. Tom in the meantime, while zoning a little bit. Faker gets the kill onto that support. Maus Maokai Lilac. Zonia's the onslaught of shadows, but Bang is just cleaning everybody up. Wolf taking some turret damage, and that is going to be an ace. A clean ace for SK Telecom, and I think we just might see the end of the game right here. Yeah, definitely will. Oh, They've got yeah. so much power. They have two sheens, and Faker comes back in to try and close this game wow. out. How about that, Udyr, for Tom? SK Telecom's first jungler, first new jungler in two years comes in, makes a big impression, and it's a bear-shaped impression. <laughs> GG. Yeah, very good game all around. I love the draft that they used. I think they had a very refined strategy to, to help 
with the Zudier pickup. And they played around Tom's strengths and the strengths of the champion, had a lot of different options for a 1-3-1, and yeah. just turned on the pressure and didn't relent in that game. And great performance, particularly by Bang, actually, getting yeah. those solo kills early on, contributing to 13 out of 15 of the team's kills. Hard to, uh, it's hard to pick an MVP, I think, that game. Everybody genuinely yeah. played very good. It was a very good very well. team effort in terms of wave manipulation, objective control, great early call on that uh, Baron. That's a team composition where you can two-man it like that. Yep. Really cool.